So if you just got yourself the brand new DJI Neo, there is a few things you need to change right now in order to get the best possible image quality from this drone. So in today's video, I'll go through all the settings, adjustments and tweaks that you should do right now to get the best possible videos coming from the DJI Neo. So let's start with the smartphone. Now by default, there's not much to change when it comes to the settings because it should be set to 4K30 at H.265, but it doesn't hurt to go in and uh, just double check that to see if you have the correct resolution. Uh, so basically there's not much to do in terms of uh, actual resolution and, and record settings. But what you need to change is the different settings on each of the quick shots and the follow mode and everything in between there. So by default, these are set to flat and medium and so on, which works fine in some scenarios, but the majority of the time, your shots will just end up looking way too close, which takes away the whole aerial drone experience, if you ask me. So you want to go in and change the settings on these to max distance, so far, and also the highest altitude, which is high. And the reason you want to change these is because it will eliminate some of that changes in exposure, which will make your video look good, then not so good, and then good again, and so on. And this is due to the limitation when you're using a smartphone to control your drone or use the quick shots, follow mode or direction track without using a controller because there's no options to use manual settings at this point. So by having the drone fly further away and as high as possible will actually greatly improve your image quality as you will get a more consistent exposure because the drone is looking down at you and not up at you, you know, splitting the foreground and the sky. But to get the absolute best possible image quality from the DJI Neo, you would need to use a dedicated remote controller, either the RCN3 controller, which comes with the Fly More combo, or the DJI RC2, which can be purchased separately. So let's take a look at the settings. The first section is um, safety and return to home altitude. By default, this is set to 30 meters, which is fine, but you also want to consider changing this depending on the environment you fly in. So let's say if you're in the forest, for example, I would actually recommend setting this as low as possible to prevent it from rising too high and then crash into trees where you can't grab it because this does not have obstacle avoidance sensors. So it doesn't matter what's above it, it will just rise straight up. And the same goes with the open fields. I would just recommend setting this as low as possible because you don't wanna waste time on a necessary return to home altitude before it actually comes back home. And of course, if you find yourself in a tricky situation, the best option is always to cancel the return to home when that kicks in and then fly back manually. In my opinion, that is by far the safest way of returning your drone back to its takeoff position. Now, going down the list here, we also have a distance and altitude. And here you wanna make sure that the uh, distance is set to no limit. You don't wanna have a limit on this. So let's say you have a limit set to 300 meters and you see something in the distance you really want to record. So you press the record button and you fly out there and in the middle of your shot, you suddenly get this message, max distance reached and your drone just stops and your shot turns out completely unusable. And you also waste some battery life because now you need to go into the settings and change that. And maybe you didn't know you could do that during a flight. So you start walking towards the drone and set up a new shot and you know, everything is just a mess. So definitely make sure to set this to no limit. Now, as for altitude, this is uh, locked at 120 meters from the takeoff position as this is a C0 label drone. So you can't change this to be higher than 120. And this is not gonna change in the future with a firmware update. This is just how it is. Max altitude is 120 meters from the takeoff position. So if you want to go higher, if you want to fly higher up a mountain, for example, well, you gotta start walking. Now, another thing I also recommend that you do before you start flying is also to calibrate the compass and the IMU. Even if this says normal, it's always good to do this now and then just to make sure that everything will run smoothly. And the last tab of the safety section is advanced safety settings. And here you have a few options for signal loss. So if it happens that you lose the signal, you can select if the drone should automatically return to home, descend or hover. And most of the times you're only gonna use return to home anyway, because it's, it's basically one of the safest options to use, especially as a beginner. So when the signal is lost, the drone will automatically trigger return to home and uh, it will come back to where you stand or its takeoff position. But there is 
a few scenarios where you might want to change this. So let's say you're out on the go, maybe you're on a boat or maybe on a paddleboard, or maybe you just want to use cruise control and take off from one location and then use cruise control to a different location where you want to land. Then this is where you might want to change over to hover. So hover will basically make the drone hover in place at the point where the signal was lost instead of flying all the way back to its takeoff position. And this means that you can just turn around and go back a few meters before the signal actually kicks in and you have full control over the drone again. But like I said, most of the times you will probably be better off using return to home. But if you're on the move and you know that your takeoff position is one place and your landing position is in a different place, then definitely change this over to hover. Now we also have the last option here, which is descend. You don't want to touch this. I'm not even sure why this is an option. Not only will you lose the signal, but the drone will just go straight down no matter what's below it. So for your own good, don't use this one. Now, let's talk about the control section. And this is where you adjust the different parameters to make your flying experience better and more personal. So there is no right or wrong when it comes to these settings. And I recommend testing this out for yourself so you can find something you like, because this is mainly how you control the drone and how you tilt the camera. So it's gonna be personal. But starting from the top here, we have subject scanning, which basically scans for objects and when the drone sees an object it's marked with a green circle with a plus inside here. So when you tap this the subject will be highlighted and you can now use features like quick shots, tracking and spotlight and also point of interest. Now we also have display zoom which is basically making the text on the screen larger so here's a side by side of that what it looks like when it's large and normal. And below that we also have gain and expo tuning which is where you can adjust the settings for each of the three modes here so we have cine normal and sports mode and like i said earlier this really depends on your personal preferences and how you would like to fly the drone so there's no right or wrong answer here but if you want to test out my settings i'll leave them on the screen now so you can take a screenshot and then just apply them later when you have time but i do recommend that you go to an open field just uh, play around with the settings and see what works for you. Now we also have the option to customize these buttons that we have on these controllers. So for the RC2 controller, you can customize the C1 button here and the C2 button. And uh, we also have some customizations for the different dials and when you press two at the same time. But for me, I basically customized the C1 and the C2 button. So what I've done is I have the C2 button mapped to cruise control and the C1 to auto exposure lock. So when I'm out for flying and want to use cruise control, the only thing I have to do is to add some speed to the drone and a direction and then press the C2 button and the drone will maintain the same direction and speed for as long as I want, which is fantastic and something I've been using a lot with the Mini 4 Pro. And to prevent the exposure from rapidly changing, I can easily just lock it with the uh, uh, auto exposure lock here, which I mapped to the C1 button, which is fantastic. So those are basically the two features that I use with these buttons. Buttons. Now we also have a camera section here where you can adjust settings like sharpness and noise reduction and also add useful features like uh, overexposure warnings, histograms and grids. Now starting from the top, the first thing you might want to turn off is video subtitles. These are mainly unnecessary files which just makes things less organized uh, when you want to transfer the videos to a computer. However, if you find the need to add data overlays to your videos in the future, these files can be imported and those files does also contain data like speed, altitude, height, and so on. But if this is something you don't gonna use or don't plan on using in the future, I do recommend turning this off just to keep things more organized. And they will also take up a small amount of, of size as well. So if you want to get the most possible out of the 22 gigabyte of internal storage which you have on the DJI Neo, then I recommend turning this off. Now moving over to the general section here, we also have a few options which can help you improve the image quality like histogram and overexposure warning and also grid lines. And there is a reason why these will also improve your video quality because it will make it easier for you to expose 
properly and correctly and just make the overall video look better. So starting with histogram, which is this movable box here, this will show the exposure of the highlights, midtones, and shadows, which can help you expose your footage properly and prevent the shadows and the highlights from clipping. So the left side indicates shadows and the right side is the highlights and everything in between is basically midtones. So if I turn a draw now to a dark area, you can see on the left side here, it's increasing, which means that the shadows are about to clip. And this means there will be no data recovery in the darkest parts of the image because the shadows are crushed. And the same thing goes for highlights. So you don't want to exceed the highlights or exceed the shadows. So I recommend having this turned on so you can easily see how your video is exposed. Even though the auto settings does an amazing job in exposing the image properly, you do want to use manual controls, which I will talk about in a sec. The next one is overexposure warning and this will highlight the bright parts in your image which are overexposed and basically show you some zebra lines in those areas. So using this in combination with histogram you'll have a pretty good indication of the exposure and how your final video will look. Now, in case you want to shoot some videos for social media, maybe TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or you want to share a video on a widescreen TV, we also have some frame guides, which will basically add these helping guides on your screen here, which um, helps you frame the shots better, basically. So let's say you want to shoot a video for Instagram, you can just go in and select the 9x16 aspect, and on the screen now, you will see this 9x16 box, which will help you frame that shot in a better way. Now below that we also have a white balance and also style where you can change sharpness and noise reduction and this is what I mean is the most important changes you can do to the DJI Neo in order to make the image look better. So you would want to set the white balance to manual and something between 5000 and 6000 Kelvin. I wouldn't go below the 4000 area and not above the 6000 area and probably stay something in between like 5500 Kelvin, which works really good for both cloudy days and sunny days. Now you also want to change the sharpness on this drone, obviously out of the box it looks a little bit too sharp and to be honest, I'm not sure why DJI decided to set this as the default setting when this is targeted towards uh, beginners and people that probably haven't used the drone before. So you would definitely want to crank this all the way down to minus two to get the best possible experience when you fly this and then look at the footage later. Now, we also have noise reduction. I would just keep this on zero because it doesn't do that much. Maybe I would get it down to minus two just to remove some of that mushiness you might experience in certain environment. Uh, but, you know, this is just go out and test. So if you film a lot of trees, maybe go down to minus one. If you just film the open, you know, open landscape, just keep it to zero. But mainly you wanna change the sharpness and just take that all the way down to minus two. Now, further down the list here, we also have folder naming, basically the option to name the different folders of uh, your videos or where your videos will be saved to. So if you're going on a trip to LA, for example, you can just name this folder LA and whatever videos which you film in LA will be automatically added to a folder which is called LA. And then if you travel to a different country, you can just change the name to that country. And when you start flying in that country, those videos will be automatically added to that folder. And you can also do this with your video files. So if you want your video files to be named something different than DJI underline something, you can also change that. Now, the last section I want to talk about is the about section. And this section is mainly where you want to go every new day you start flying your drone because you want to check and see if there is a new firmware update available. Because we've seen this before with previous releases, uh, these updates are coming quite fast in the beginning of a new release. So it's important to check and see if there is a new firmware available, which could add some significant improvements to both quality features and, you know, all the fixes. Now going back to the main screen here where we have the live preview of the drone and uh, if we take a look at the bottom right here this says auto so we can actually change this to have manual settings now which is the biggest advantage by using a you know dedicated remote controller with the DJI Neo either the RC2 or the RC N3 controller. So on the bottom right here we have this icon that says auto if I now tap on this it will turn into pro mode or manual mode. 
This allows you to set a manual shutter speed, ISO and white balance by tapping on these boxes here which says auto. And when you've set these manual settings you'll be able to capture a much more stable image without having these automatic changes to white balance, exposure and, and so on. So this in combination with the sharpness set to minus two, you'll be able to capture videos that actually looks good. And for a brand new drone pilot with no interest in drones up until the release of the DJI Neo, this is probably the first mistake and the reason some people get videos that looks better than others because they use a dedicated remote controller and change the settings like sharpness to minus two and lock the ISO and shutter speed and also adjust the white balance. But I also have a video on the biggest beginner mistakes that new pilots do with the DJI Neo so make sure to check that out in the description below so you can have a safer flight experience and enjoy all the aspects of the new DJI Neo. So that rounds it up. Make sure to check out my signature LUTs if you haven't done that already. These will also help improve the video quality of the DJI Neo so I'll leave a link to those down in the description below and if you're interested in learning more about the DJI Neo don't forget to check out my 30 plus tips and tricks video with everything you need to know before you get started with the DJI Neo. And if you want to see more drone related videos check out these videos right here which will all give you my honest insight with additional tips and tricks to help you improve your cinematic videos. So again thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one bye bye.